I suppose the obvious thing with the teapot is that you have the pouring end at least as high as the top here. If you put it down there somewhere, you can only fill your teapot. Obvious stuff, but I've seen a few. <laughs> um, what I do is to line it up behind my pot like that so that I can get a sense of where it needs to be trimmed to fit the pot. Um, I usually do this up fairly high so I can sort of see it fairly clearly. That one's a little bit long so I'm discarding that. But I will show you how I cut it. So I start with the bit, remember we bent that away in the throwing. So I need to make a mark about halfway round and then I use that mark and this line again that I put on earlier to cut from. And I cut on what I would regard as the a conservative side to start with. And then place that against there. I can see that just needs a little bit of tweaking down the bottom. By the time I've cut some of this out, I'm going to do it with another one rather than that one, I can just take away from the inside there. I use this knife which uh, I've just bent to allow me to get into that curve without sticking into the walls of the spout. So that looks about right to me. What I'll do then is to dip this into some water and just agitate it a bit on there. So I've got some slip. Just press that on lightly and you'll see this will leave a mark where I know I can put the holes around on the inside there. And with the hole cutter, there's no need to really get them absolutely equal. The most important thing is that you get lots of holes and the holes need to add up, if you were to add up all the size of the holes all together, they've got to be larger than this hole. So you get the force from behind. It's a matter of cutting. The hole cutters are a nice idea because they clean up the inside a bit, and the inside as well. So just get as many as you can in there without weakening it. And if your teapots are thick, you can just shave this away. I would normally do this with a sharp kidney scraper. But this will stop the holes getting blocked up because the glaze will take up less where it's thinner. And when you, um, when you glaze, you can pour the glaze out through the spout, but it's worth just blowing down the spout. To clear away any residue of glaze there.
You notice that on most industrially made ones, there's a well at the bottom, the spout comes round and got a thicker part of the bottom. By throwing spouts, you're compromising that a bit. Um, I usually uh, only use a toothbrush just to um, go round. I'll just do it with a knife. A little bit of cross hatching. Enough to dampen that one. And then. And then a good pot. This is now damp, so I don't need to scroll and dump that. Make sure it's on straight. Stuck too well now. There's other thing but now about spouts is the question of them continuing to twist from the throwing on thrown spouts. So it's necessary to cut them at a, an angle at the top rather than cutting them across straight. And the usual is what's called 20 to 2. So you're cutting, as it were, across at an angle like that. <clears throat> Again, I cut on the conservative side to start with. With my spouts, I do a little cut back here as well. Again, thinking in terms of function. In a, one of those thin, very thin, flexible kidney scrapers is very good for doing that. I need a very sharp knife, which this isn't. And then using the um, hole cutter, just rub that in so you create. slight burr, a sharp edge on the inside and it's the sharp edge on the inside that causes the liquid to cut off. The outside you don't want too sharp otherwise it's easily damaged but to just roll around on the inside and so a, a metal drill bit or something is nice for doing that. So you can get that slight burr and that will cut off the liquid. Often the spouts can be a little bit harder than the, um, than the pot. So it doesn't hurt if they're looking slightly large on there because shrinkage wise they will come down in size. Just a matter of how you like them. Okay, so it's just the handle now. Again, carrot shaped. And again, starting with a an O. 
all the way around and flatten in there one side then the other I like um, people to feel confident that the handle is going to be thick enough to hold up the hot teapot Um, path of the way, but I don't want the handle to look too heavy. So what I do is to taper down the sides by using my thumb at an angle. So it's got a heavier core with thinner edges. And I really do cut my nail so it's slightly sharper up on that corner, so I can do those lines. There's a decorative feature. That's left to dry for a bit. Making sure that's opposite the spout. And again, I like them to come off at a similar height, so I have a look around there. and screwing and damping. handle I'll cut with a curve so it fits the curve of the pot. I'll also tap it with my thumb which got this nice little curve here so it just spreads a bit at the end and I can use that spread to push on, stand up for this. So it's pushed on quite firmly, fingers on the inside to press against. Holding up this way, so uh, continuing to pull a bit off the pot. And moving the pot to the handle. And then at the bottom here, just using the thumb to work that in. And then
The only thing left then to do is the thumb stop. And I use my thumb and the finger like that to create a little triangular shape. And then I hope, you know, that I've got some kind of unity between this little raised bit here, the raised bit there, raised bit there, and even a little lift at the bottom. So it works together as a whole. That's it.